Okay. Uh, again, uh, the citizens would like to welcome Andre Swani. Andre uh, was under contract with the city of Roswell to perform XYZ services. He went beyond that to design and illustrate what you're going to see at the request of the citizens. This is a citizen's initiative entirely. So this groundswell has happened because of all of you, and this is his gift to the city. Something like that. It depends <laughs> if you like it. You can turn it, you can turn it down. OK, let's see. This is, uh, of course, it's daylight, so it's difficult to see. It's not impossible. But can you hear me because of the famous waterfall? I don't think you can hear me. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? I can hear Okay. Here, here. Is everybody finished kissing each other? <laughs> okay. I haven't kissed you yet. Okay. okay. Uh, I need to uh, contextualize this as uh, as Lou said. Um, there is the backstory is that the city has initiated a redesign of Atlanta Street as it crosses Roswell, or at least the center of Roswell, and that is primarily an engineering endeavor. And that presentation at about 35 or 40 percent of completion will be today at City Hall at 6 o'clock from 6 to 8. So if you want to see the engineering side, that is from 6 to 8 today, and it's all very convenient because this is not why we're, I'm here today, it just coincides perfectly. Now, because engineering is engineering and concerned with a whole series of variables of uh, safety, drainage, and that kind of thing, uh, it normally does not take, at least since the 1940s, it has not taken aesthetics into consideration. And we were retained to do, I'm simplifying, but basically to do the aesthetic part. And it's a relatively small contract, and it's what's sometimes called urban design. You know, what are the curbs going to be like? What are the trees? What are the lamps? What are the uh, sidewalks? What kind of sidewalks there are? Now, I was, uh, when I, we, we, we fought very hard to get this project because over the years we've developed this technology to be very, very precise about how to handle a street like this one which continually varies. Now remember, it's a, it's a country road and then it enters urban areas and sometimes it's suburban strip development and so forth. And if you have a single idea, nothing works. So you have to have a whole series of ideas all the way through without confusing people. Like, for example, it can't have the same light everywhere. You know, it can't all be cobra heads. It also can't be nice, human-friendly light. And sometimes you don't want any light at all so you can see the stars. Another thing that happens is that, for example, trees, depending on how much visibility the retailers want and so forth. So we developed this technology, actually, which we intended to apply to much more refined places, frankly, you know, we're thinking of Paris. But we all think of Paris, but it could do Paris, but it's doing Atlanta Street. We had never used this technique. And so we did it, we used it, and I'm going to show it to you. And we completed that. It's what's called the deliverables. We wrote a report, and there's a whole series of details. And that is the official plan. And however uh, much we tried, no one brought up any of, none of you in this public process brought up any of these issues. Nobody brought up, you know, your concern, the concerns that I listed. What you did bring up is a whole series of other problems and aspirations. Like I can't, I can't walk to where the bus goes. Uh, this is a beautiful square, nobody's using it. There was a whole series of things that were brought up in these meetings. We were here about three days. And I, frankly, I couldn't go back and not respond to them because what I was afraid of is that our situation was not neutral. You know, we either, you know, if all we did what the city wanted, somehow you had gotten worked up as to what this process would be like, and you would simply be horribly disappointed. Like, is that all he did? I thought he would save us. You know, there was, that was the attitude that came in. So we started taking this. I could have said, no, that's not our job, that's not our job, that's not our job. But that wouldn't have ended up well. It would have ended up very badly. So we found 
that there were actually indeed extraordinary possibilities, not just normal possibilities, but extraordinary possibilities for this place, for Roswell, to end up much better. Now think of it this way. Roswell could also end up much worse. When you're going to rebuild that highway, the result for sure is not neutral. You could either get, it could remain more or less the same, etc. And let me just give you a couple of details. Essentially what's being added, the highway is now unsafe because it has a third, it, it's three lanes. And people apparently don't know which way it's going and they have accidents. And uh, I could discuss a lot why that happened, etc. But basically it's, it's adding a fourth lane. The addition of that fourth lane, depending on how it's done, not only does it give you more asphalt, but worse, greater speed, if, that, if you can believe that. And greater speed is what is really obnoxious about Atlanta Street. It's not the number of cars. Remember, if you've been to a beautiful place like Washington, D.C., or Boston, or Paris, or London, the thoroughfares are often wider, sometimes much wider, but they're still great because the cars are not moving quickly, and they're thought for cars and pedestrians. If this becomes exclusively an engineering endeavor and the cars move quickly, which is part of safety, you end up with a much worse Roswell. Now, you'll say, well, statistically there are fewer accidents. Statistically, I don't know what else you get, because I'll tell you what else. If you think that you're going to get your traffic congestion solved, forget about it. Traffic congestion is never solved. All you're getting is traffic congestion at four lanes instead of three lanes. And a lot of money is being spent. Now, I'm very interested in this money, this DOT money, because normally there isn't any money to do anything. There's no money to do anything, particularly in the public realm. So when I saw that what some of the aspirations of this road were like, a lot of money was going to be spent. This is an opportunity that's very rare and basically what we're doing is hijacking that money to actually make this a much better place. This kind of planning is impossible unless there were basically essentially state DOT funds. So that's the context. In another context, you'd say this guy is dreaming. Okay. Now, everything I'm going to show you today except for the first five slides, which are the official presentation, is not the city's plan. They have nothing to do with it. They may not like it. They may like it. It is a hundred percent your plan. A hundred percent. And if you if you want it to happen, you have to get together and move it forward. And if you don't want it to happen, all you have to do is nothing. <laughs> you don't have to protest. You understand? There is no momentum behind this other than yours. <coughs> okay. There's also no inertia. You know, it's, no one's resisting it. I have not met any resistance so far. So it's a kind of a neutral thing, but this is your plan. And um, let's see what you think. And, but I think actually, those of you who came in will recognize what your, what you, your contribution. By the way, are there any, any of the older folk who live on what we call the Southern Town Center down by the hill? No, you live in the Upper Town Center. Oh, you do down there? You don't live on the other side? Okay, got it. Okay, well, you're not the older folk. I meant the old oh, guys. Silver tongue devil, you. No, the old guys. You know who I'm talking two about. two hours to stop that. Idea. You know the old guys. Yeah. Anyway, there was some protest. One of the things that you'll see tonight is that 38th is that, um, I'm sorry, uh, Atlanta Street. At one point, somebody had the idea to split it. Do you remember the famous split? My reading of that is that somebody tried to have some creative idea. And that's the best they came up with. I can't explain it any other way, because actually it costs a lot. It is actually profoundly unnecessary, and it's very expensive. You have to buy a lot of private property in order to do that. It also has a negative consequence, which is when you split the, the traffic, the shops get half the traffic and they die. You understand? You know, so all the shops that are there on Planta Street, whatever their value, mm -hmm. They would only get the they won't yeah. only get the morning trade, and almost certainly they would die. So you have more empty strip. It'll be just as ugly, but empty. <laughs> okay. So so the, and, you know, and I brought that problem up, and it really I thought that they should be alerted to the fact that this wasn't good for retail. Okay. 
But anyway, so I'm, now I'm going to show you this. Um, okay, this is a drawing we did that shows the full extent of what we are. Uh, we were asked to look at crossing the bridge. Uh, nice and very nice entrance. Beautiful view of the green, like this. And then it goes up like this, and it varies continually, as I said, all the way down. And then we end. Uh, our our charge ends at the at City Hall in front of City Hall here, and uh, sort of where, where Canton Street, Canton Street? Canton. What is it? Canton. Canton. Canton Street uh, uh, begins. Okay, so that's our charge. I don't know why this is wiggling, probably because you're all nervous. It's a waterfall. Okay, so that's the thing. And then we, the, the technology I was explaining to you was called an urban scorecard, and basically it takes a piece of the street like this of the thoroughfare, and then on, on, on each side, and this one facing west, it takes all the variables. These are all the variables that we can, that we uh, we consider. An enormous number of variables. Well, these are the variables in the big type. The choices are down here, and then basically you look. We found we cut it per block or per property line, and here you can see what's happening in front of you. Or you say, what kind of light am I getting? It's this one. You see like that. So normally this is some kind of endless report, but it's absolutely clear. It's exactly like a musical score. You know, it just it just moves on down with all the variables. And that's what I was most excited about. This is about half the length. And this is the western side and this is the northern side. And you can look it all up like that. Okay, so this is being submitted to the city. Um, if I may say, this does not affect the engineering. The engineering is what it is, the number of lanes, the width of the lanes, etc. But remember, this is relatively superficial. Yes, there may be curves and swales and lights, but in the end what you will know is that it's four lanes of traffic still congested. And you can take pleasure in knowing that fewer people are being killed or whatever. You know, which is a considerable uh, asset. And also they cause traffic jams. Good enough. So, you know, you'll have fewer jams. Could be but it'll right. still be congested. Now, the kind of thing that came up was the, for example, I stood in the square, the square in front of Barrington Hall, and they said, no one's here. No one comes to this. And we had some ideas about uh, what uh, would, would, first of all, I don't want to rehearse everything, but the argument was, why would you want anybody to be here? It's a civic space. You're supposed to be proud of it. It's supposed to look good. And then when you have a festival, like a concert, you go there. That's what civic spaces are like. People actually, if you want pedestrians, they go where there are streets. They don't go to squares. They go to where there are streets. They're much tighter. They're two-sided. And Canton Street is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. For Americans to hang around anywhere, there has to be food. Sorry to say it. OK, you have to, you, we need to be continually plied by food and drink from both sides, essentially. And also the spatial definition, which I showed some slides of, spatial definition involves you're feeling like you're in a space and not in the middle of nowhere. And Canton Street, for one block, is extremely intimate, and that's why it's so special. It's regionally famous. By the way, it's only a few hundred feet, and it's regionally famous, and it's a delightful place. And that's almost a perfect example of what I'm talking about. And it works despite the fact that there's not enough parking, and it's extremely confusing. It has no signaling from the street. Nobody knows it's there. You know, it goes to show you how the, the power of this idea. If you get the pedestrian elements right, people will drive a very great distance. We work off existing successes. That's your greatest success. So we, we took that, OK? So we were alerted to that, and you'll see that happening. Now, Barrington Hall is just an example of something. They said, we can't see Barrington Hall. And I knew there was a controversy about to happen, which everybody talks about. Do we take the trees down or not? Because it didn't used to have you know, that very large hedge. I would say, don't take it down, because you're opening it up to an environment which is not the historical environment. It's a lot of cars. So that's a very good, I think that big hedge is something very good to have. On the other hand, the approach, what's the street that approaches it? Mimosa. Mimosa. 120? No, Mimosa. 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 OK, but Mimosa was, in fact, where Barrington Hall is facing. Mimosa. That's what it decided to face. And Mimosa, actually, I'll show you the problem. You can't really see it from there. And it, you can, but you can't. You can, but it's really unsatisfying. But 
it did alert me to one thing. When I walked up on that mimosa, I thought the whole thing, or most parts, were highly integral. One really did get the experience of what it used to be like. And there are people protecting the houses, mm -hmm. but they're not protecting the horizontal surface. And the human eye sees as much about as much vertically as horizontally. When you look at something, you're seeing this, and at least half is that, the base. The street as it currently exists is the way it used to be. It has open swales, very irregular pavements, and so forth. It too is historical. Okay, that's a really important part of the picture, literally of the picture. And then I saw that some there were some very well-intentioned repairs on the square, putting brick and granite and so forth on the square. And that was going to go all the way down, Mimosa. That would destroy Mimosa. Just destroy it, if you, just as if you had changed every single facade. So I basically uh, very strongly spoke to the preservation organization and I said, you can't just take care, you've got to take care not only of the verticals but of the horizontals. And apparently they're acting on it. But that street needs very little. In fact, virtually any improvement would be disruptive. Now I do understand that there are puddles when you come out of the Baptist church. Fine fix the puddles. <laughs> there, but nowhere else. Because insofar as you fix the puddles, you ruin it. Okay, so, okay, but let's talk about Barrington Hall. Because I looked at Barrington Hall, and it was like this, and I said, yeah, you understand it's there. But you know, it's not a very good house. Well, it turns out it's not a very good house, because the whole bottom third is removed. It's like, you know, how, you're supposed to have, cla it's classically proportioned, and you cannot see the beauty of it when you cut a classical column by a third. That's number one problem. Number two, is there just enough branches to cover it so that unless you're really looking for it, you can't see it. And there's one primary branch. And then there's one tree newly planted that for sure is gonna block it forever. So the first thing that I thought, and then one more thing, there's a, there's a, there's a stone wall, quite decent, that's horizontal right. here and then horizontal there, and somehow, when it's in front of Barrington Hall, it's angled. So it looks like the thing is sinking. <laughs> you see? And by the way, the garden, it's a very typical situation of essentially bad landscape architecture. When you have a convex, when you have a convex approach to a house like this, the eye has to hump over it, and that's why you cut off the base of the columns. If you look at any Italian villa, it's a concave approach. They always go down and then up. That's the, you always see that, just think, think of any postcard, anything. The approach is concave. It's a beautiful curve. You have the opposite, you have a hump. Okay. Now once you get on it, you see the whole house, but in the meantime, you don't see it. So two suggestions was A, here they are, okay. Just don't take the wall down, just cut it. Cut the stone wall to that height, like that, and make it horizontal. Two, insofar as you can stand it, shave down the hump, which is just at the very end. It's flat, 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 and then it goes boom, like that. Do you, do you, in fact, it has a secondary retaining wall. It's such a bad little hump that it can't even it doesn't even lay on a natural angle of repose. It's, it's a problem. Somebody decided that they wanted it to be perfectly flat. And so you block it. And then the third thing is clip one branch and move that tree. And then you'll see it. It's very minor. If you don't do it, it's because you don't really care about it being seen. So, you know, it's just your choice. You, and I'm sure it's going to be the Barrington Hall people. And, uh, and everything is uh, difficult in America these days. But this is about as easy as any recommendation can possibly be. It's just simply what anybody would do is you do a first draft and then you see what it's like and then you do a second draft. And that's, that's what's shown here, okay? So now, let's talk about what's really interesting, the special projects. Um, there was a time in every culture and everywhere in the world where people had to be within walking distance of their daily needs.
happened in America, that was into the 40s. Because most people didn't have cars, and even when you had a car, you had one car. And so if you couldn't get to your daily needs, you literally couldn't live. And real estate value dropped cataclysmically. Now when the cars came in and everybody got inexpensive and multiple cars, you could start making uh, a, uh, you could start making a decision saying, I can drive past my corner store. I can drive past my local church. I can drive past my local restaurant because it's only a few minutes more, right? So you drive past it and the local ones often died to be replaced by the cheaper ones. So that's, the, that's what arose with the cheaper chain restaurants and the uh, Home Depots and so forth. People were willing to subsidize the cheaper price by driving longer. <coughs> that regime is ending, okay? And you know everybody, including Walmart, is worried, and they all have smaller formats, and Brandsmart has smaller formats, because driving has become something that was never conceived, which is a torture. Okay, it's never shown in the car ads. <laughs> okay, it's always the open landscape and the beautiful Italian piazza, but they never actually show you what you use a car for which is torture. <laughs> no. Okay, so what's happening in the world for about six reasons that you more or less know at least three of uh, is the, the value of places are the ones in which A, are pedestrian, and B, have uh, are people are within walking distance of ordinary useful things. Two things are driving it. The young people don't even like cars. <coughs> And GM, ideologically, GM is, uh, is having a problem with it. There was an article about two or three weeks ago about GM saying, the young people don't like cars. I find that to be true. They like urbanity. And also, the old folk can't drive. <laughs> because, well, they shouldn't drive, but it's also the opposite of a pleasure. It feels, it feels very hard. But they have to drive. So, because those are the two de big demographics, the baby boomers and the echo boomers, well, those places that, in fact, have walkable town centers, have a future. And people are almost desperate. Disney now charges $88 a day, or 82, just to walk around. <laughs> it's all you get for the $82. <laughs> okay. So, line up to one, basically people said, help us here in front of the City Hall, help us here in front of the Square in front of Barrington Hall, and then help us here because there are a lot of people living here and we're trying to have an idea with the double. So what we were able to, to basically provide is a southern village center, a central village center, and a northern village center very easily. And this is what they look like. Okay, it's like that. Now, as it happens, this is almost incredible. This is a five-minute walk. Five-minute walk is what everybody does. People walk longer than that often very much longer, but five minute is something you never think about. You don't get in the car to walk a quarter mile. It's like getting in the car to go to the, see that blue thing back there? That blue? Uh, Southerners do. Over there? No, Southerners not. Well, if you have a walk, okay, let me just lay this. Southerners will drive through. Let me, no, let me, look at, <laughs> let me lay this absolutely to rest. No one walks half an hour if it's a walkable environment. No one will drive half an hour. I was, I just got an email, this was being discussed, in 10 and minus 10 degrees, people walk in walkable environments. It has nothing to do with the weather. It's just that Southerners don't have any walkable environments. You have to notice that your 300 feet of Main Street is regionally famous. That's how few walkable environments you have. And what we're proposing is walkable environments. In other words, these areas here are actually rather special if they're supplied with uh, useful stores. Okay, so. So this is what this is an accurate drawing of what it's like. And just to orient you, there are the two big condominiums with two more to go over here. And this is, I don't have that drawing, but this is where there was going to be a second uh, a second road built, and the people in the condos were desperate. I know people in condos. They can get very organized and throw the next election any time they want. <laughs> it's complete. It happens in Florida all the time. You never get a condo against you that can stop anything. So when I met the three condo guys, the two condo guys and the condo girl, I knew it was over. <laughs> they, just, they just didn't want that. Also, we studied it, studied it, and tried to get it to work. 
and they just have to, you have to buy so much property, you basically wake up every dog. It's so expensive to do that that we said, eventually we said this is useless. And you know what else? It doesn't even get you the town center you want because neither side works because none of them have enough traffic. Then of course there's a square looking for a row, the square in front of Barrington Hall, and then the city hall of which you built a very ambitious civic building in the woods that zero percent of the people driving by know it's there. Mm -hmm. In fact, I stood on the sidewalk and tried to line up a path coming in on the dome and I couldn't see the dome. So you could have saved the money on the dome. And besides, you have the single worst intersection is right here at the mouth of Canton Street, believe it or not. It's full of signs and, li and overhead wires and terrible traffic and a dying gas station out of date an open parking lot, dying retail next to it. You know, the only thing that works there is a kind of mail thing. The others are literally empty. So you have the 100% corner, which is to say the corner with the most traffic of all, right, is it not? And it has, no, this is the corner with the most traffic, actually. The second, the second corner with the most traffic, and the retail is dying. It's so badly designed. So this is what we are proposing is, um, uh, and you will be getting bigger drawings than this, but basically a town center here with service roads on either side, and this design itself, we kept the good buildings and the others. The second one is a parallel street in behind Atlanta Street with almost perfect ownership pattern to do that, which would become the town center for the mill village. And then Mill Village, this Mill Village, which is incredibly beautiful, and really quite elaborate and quite large and walkable, has no Main Street. And the Main Street could never be built on Atlanta because it doesn't have the other side. You only have one side, but you can build it directly behind, exactly like Canton Street is not on Atlanta Street. And then over here, instead of the, instead of the traffic engineering swoopy curves that, that go like that, you can actually, this is where you can put the split. You have the one-way split, except when you do it, it's called a town square. Remember what town squares all over the south, what they do? You arrive at the town square and you do a one-way split and you know you're someplace. And you can go all over the south, you're in the middle of nowhere and you arrive at a town square and you say, wow, this is amazing. And so I'm going to show you how this is detailed. So these are the three. And of course, I think I have a drawing. Yes, and these are the five, the almost perfect five minute walks. Okay? Now, in detail, the southern one, the southern neighborhood center, this is what it looks like now. It's pretty ragged, lots of land to be developed, not that much good stuff. Relatively decent shopping center, one good church, but the rest is, by the way, this is, remember what you see in the present, what you see in the present, in the field of planning is a distortion field because we're thinking 10 and 20 and 30 years out. If all you see is the present, then you don't need me because you're the experts in the present. But I do know that most of the buildings there are not going to be there in 20 years. They're just absolutely first generation building. So this becomes that. Okay, this becomes that. And this essentially has a this is an earlier version, but what it has is a service roads on the side. You know, what about the service roads? I understand from the traffic engineers that adding that lane is difficult there because you have to buy land, right? I heard that. I find that, I actually don't credit that as truth because if they can't buy land here, why the hell should they buy land down here? It's absolutely ridiculous, it's an argument. But one of the things about service streets on either side, and I'm talking about boulevards, you know, like in Paris and so forth, is that that, you get the four fast lanes in the middle, and then you get the slow lanes with parking on the side, and they're private parking. <coughs> they are actually, pri and they can go on private property. In fact, the private property, what they're getting is at the cost of, the, they're getting a very, very neat parking lot, which actually protects also, which would also protect the frontage. So instead of being a violent, you see, the thing about boulevards, which you can see in Washington and other places, is that that additional layer of, sh of, of, uh, of slow traffic buffers the pedestrian. 
you know, that it actually shields the pedestrian. So you're not really out there in the four uh, in the four lane hell. You know, and, and generally, I do think that a lot of it can be. Did you point can, to where that is? It's not. It's not, it's not there. It's going to. It's in the next one. Okay, here it is. Okay, so right here, here's the two big condos, and, and right at the beginning, they split off. All the ones that go through keep going through, and you have the additional. Every once in a while, they come out. For example, the church. Where's the church? The church, I believe, is here. To the, the church actually. To my left is here. Right. So I don't know whether the church has it or not. Obviously, this is a matter of engineering. But there's absolutely no reason, zero reason, why this doesn't work better than any other thing. It certainly works better than having the parking lots that you have there. Okay. So this is this is standard issue traffic engineering, but it allows these buildings, which are really strip shopping center buildings that have no no chance of having any value, to actually create the town center of some length, and really quite quite a nice one, which brings all these people into walking distance and all these future people into walking distance. This is the most solid of your future town centers. There is nothing radical about this. See, one of the things you, I don't know, sometimes you say, well, this surely, no, this is completely by the book stuff. There is no problem doing this. And if you say, well, I have to wake up the dogs and buy some of their land or get them to cooperate, what do you think this was going to be like up here? You know, that would have been a, a perfect help. Andres, before yeah. we move on, did yeah. you look at an opportunity where you tried to bring people into this wonderful natural amenity that the city of yeah. Roswell has and reconnect them to this they are, and their um, views? Yeah. Um, well, when this gets filled, I think there should be there should be ways there. Because right now we're kind of walling that off, yeah. and currently it's walled off. And yeah. you know, when we talk about the jewels of the city, the natural amenities of Roswell and the history them. are their jewels. And right now we're we're kind of blocking that off. Right. Again. But what's going to happen is it would have been blocked off anyway. Uh, yeah. it would have been There's a concept that, that okay, does this, this would have been no. Because the concept which we, we tested is to put a road in front, which is called a drive. No, there was a concept we did with the four lane yeah. and a roundabout up here. The, no, Two roundabouts. Roundabout. Yes. But what it did was it reached people in here, it stepped the buildings down so you yeah. could have a parking deck and green roofs and terraces to look this, over. Uh, we didn't, it, it, that could still happen here, we just didn't draw it. What's okay. missing is all that. It all like this stuff, all this stuff is that the developable land. It does look a bit blocked off. All this is undeveloped. And, I, and we thought that it could be, all this could be terraced down exactly the way that you say. We just didn't do it because we didn't have the, 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 the land ownership there. Do you have the land ownership here? Uh, you hardly, have, you don't have to buy it. That land ownership does not have to be bought. Okay. And the city would have to buy this? No. Okay. No, so not at all. I don't think in either case you, the city would be buying the land. Well, the city would have to buy a hell of a lot of land to build this. I agree with that. But there's another concept that keeps the uh, the road alignment here, but tries to bring people yeah. back and take well, advantage of this wonderful, but listen, wonderful just land. Just listen to what I'm saying. Right. Yes. That concept fits here. We Can just didn't draw it. First, maybe? No, no, yeah. he's right. He's right. But I wanted to acknowledge right. what I'm saying. Okay, a hundred percent of that concept works. A hundred percent. Got it? I just haven't drawn it. Okay. Got it? Yeah, got it. You bring me that concept and I'll drop it right in. But the pro the problem is that this is a huge project. This is this is practically designing a new town. Because right. I have to know what the land ownership gotcha. is, what happens, negotiated with everybody. But now, if you elected me emperor, <laughs> time, limited, <laughs> time limited for a month, I could get that done. But that's what it would take, because I have to meet everybody, convince everybody, etc. But let me just say, whatever the vision is, it can be dropped in soon. Mm -hmm. like now, there's another more radical vision, which is to take that parking lot that ends right there. There's a parking lot there, and connect it on the front with very slow traffic, not the big traffic, connected on the front 
as Olmsted would have done. As Olmsted would have done, and it's called a drive. And it's what all the Olmsted parks drive. But I have very little hope, because everybody who lives there wants a direct relationship with you know, all the people who have the, basically, what in Florida we would call the beach. Yeah. <laughs> when you have the beach, they don't want anybody in front of the beach. But that would be the big move, and we could draw it, but that would be up here. But I, I don't want to get into that. But bring me that plan, and we can put that plan yes. in. We'll put that. That's not a problem. Andres, we've got about 30 minutes. Okay. So this is it. And I think that this, perhaps if we have time, we could draw. We could draw. If you send it to us, we could draw that in. Okay. But by the way, you should tell uh, the you know, the old folks who came in, they're probably fomenting revolution as we speak, that they're okay. No, no, I have an ownership in those you know condos also, and oh, I would be very set, set against it. Yeah, we, bought, we bought property to look at and yeah. to have. Yeah. Here. And we don't want it to depreciate. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you okay? So, so some other young folks don't want it either. Fine. Okay. So that's anyway. But what I'm saying is, just be perfectly clear. We heard it. When you see the road doing that, it's not us. Or rather, I should say, it's not you. It's the plan you're going to see up there at mm -hmm. six o'clock still has that road. But don't be confused. It's not this plan. Okay. Okay, next. Okay, New Canton Street. Uh, here's a square. This is the road that's about to be ruined, you know, which is Mimosa. This is, you have a very long distance from here to here. Mm -hmm. The hump is here. And by the way, I, I guarantee you that you can walk there and you're going to say, don't change anything. This is perfect. Don't change anything. There's a bush here and a tree there and a wall that's already got moss on it. Well, you know, fine. But if you want this thing to be seen, you have to shave it there. Okay, that's that's not that hard to do. And then it's a wonderful sort of structuring device. Now here you have something else. You have a whole series of pretty nice shops here, none of which work. Okay, and then you have horrible half-dead stores all the way down, all the way down. It's amazing. Half nice street, half-dead stores all the way down. Not fully dead, I don't know why. <laughs> partially it has to do with the fact that it's one-sided. We could have, to fix this, we would have had to do the same thing that I just showed you down there. But these are the backyards of these houses, so we couldn't do it. But what we did discover is that there's an implied, if you go back here behind, oh, well, actually what set us off is that there's a plan. This is such a bad intersection here. Mm -hmm. Right next to the hardware store, that there was a plan, an unbelievably harsh plan, to go something like wham wham. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, very hard plan. Wham wham. And you bought some housing and it knocked it down and so forth. Yeah. So we looked at it closely and we said, you don't have to do this big. By the way, it ended on the Baptist church and they mm -hmm. were unhappy because they got the headlines. Oh. <laughs> All you have to do is, okay. is switch this little bit here. Leave that there, leave the Baptist alone, do like that, <laughs> come over, and just connect there. Now that liberates a very interesting site, because suddenly this site, instead of being small, has access to a lot of dead parking over on the other side, right? Just before the, the um, cemetery. And it, it comes up with the idea, you all want a market. That's interesting. You want a market. Now you don't want a little nothing market, you want a small supermarket that has some parking. And so one of the things that came up is this hard, hardware stores, that's a beloved hardware store. Oh, no, it's not beloved. Okay. It's just existing. Yeah. All hardware stores are beloved. Not that one. <laughs> okay. They're all, but you're just not a guy. No, I don't want No, I'm sorry. That's male space and it's staying there. Last vestige of male space. Okay, but here's the problem with that. What's good about hardware stores is that they don't need a lot of parking. Okay, they're useful. It is the crap. So we have a plan that keeps it there. We also have a plan that moves it up here in this corner. Now, of course, that would be a new shop. But at that point, you can park underneath it, you see, because that's what the topography is doing. But in any case, if you yourself were to walk back here and take this little walk in the back, just like that, you would find that it's extremely interesting. It's got topography, it's got retaining walls, it's got trees, it's incredibly cool back there. So we said, if Canton Street is the best thing you have, let's build a really big Canton Street back here. 
And so we did that, and that looks like that. Okay, so we strained out the parking on this side. You know, that's, this is hopeless. So yes, let's have the parking there. You see this very much slighter angle mm -hmm. that goes on here? Mm -hmm. And then we can have, if, if this, if this I, mean, I think there's another one I should show first. No. I'll show it later. Okay, anyway, this is the one that's already switched. Okay, so this is the supermarket. This is its parking. And here you have a neatly packed amount of parking, much more than you have in Canton Street. And back here, there's a walkable, just like Canton Street, a walkable narrow street with shops on both sides, lots of parking, mm -hmm. where the topography works. And here you have a hill, mm -hmm. which is really interesting. And here you can have a series of restaurants actually on terraces, on a terraced. You know how there are city streets, sometimes very rare in America, that have steps mm -hmm. and actually have platforms coming out? That would be completely, now that wouldn't be of regional importance. That would actually be nationally known. So this loop completes, this one already exists. This loop completes. This is the fully pedestrian on the steps. This loop completes to here. This loop completes to here. Now notice the people, on the, uh, the people in these townhouses that are sunk down. Do you know which ones? Is anybody here from there? Yes, here you are. Okay, so that, the people in these townhouses, we originally had pavilions in front. They said, don't block the last of our sunlight. So we put a square there, which in any case is, is welcome, you know, because you don't have, this is actually quite urban, although there are always trees everywhere. So there's a picturesque way to climb up like this, over like that. And this is actually better than Canton Street. It's much more picturesque, it's mm -hmm. much bigger, it's much more complete, the parking's much more rationalized. We had a meeting the night I first showed this, and five, not two restaurateurs says, we'll take five restaurants. <laughs> Just write, sign us up for five. Actually, four in a bakery. Four restaurants in a bakery. And tomorrow we're meeting, the, the, this whole thing is owned by only three landowners, mm -hmm. which is incredible. Mm -hmm. Essentially, the, the hardware store, I think the hardware store people, the people in the back, and then Mr. Orkin. So it's, it's, it's by the standards of any public, uh, anything like this, you don't have to assemble you know, a, dozen, uh, a dozen owners. This is very doable, and we're gonna see where it goes. Okay, so look, some details. By the way, this is a hotel that was proposed just before the, the Great Recession, which would be fantastic to have, and now it actually has a reason to be there. There was zero reason for it to be there. Could have been much more in the, now, now there's a street, but above all, what, 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 the reason I'm excited about this is that all these, suddenly this town, this charming, charming mill town has its main street. So it forms part of the same trajectory. Okay, so this is what it looks like. This is from a different angle. Okay, this is taken from the north. Baptist, Baptist church, existing bad intersection, bad uh, hardware store, bad retail, big shapeless parking lot. But look at the trees. There are trees back here. All like that. These are all, with the possible exception of one house, these are all very bad. This is a gap, a bad gap here that mm -hmm. leaks out of the square. Another bad gap there. Cheap retail. These are the townhouses that are sort of sunk in the ground. But you can see that it's actually a completely, it's funny, it's actually worse back here than in front. And of course, so the idea is how do we get the Department of Transportation to pay for this? And the reason you do it is that if you know how to apply, the DOT is not about cars, it's about transportation. And you say, this is pedestrian, this is mixed use, this is gonna work for bicycles, this is gonna work for transit. Remember the free transit stops at the circles, They'll, they think they went to heaven. What you can't ever do is tell them to not spend money, okay, because then they'll fight you. But if you can say, spend money this way, they're very happy to do it. <laughs> Particularly if, they, if you basically remove opposition. You say, if you do this, if you do this, and pay for it, as part of the horrible uh, uh, problem we have, then we will all back you. We will not torture you at all. If, however, you do not do this, then you're going to meet the usual opposition you were, you've met all your life. That's the way you deal with them. And, but also speak about pedestrians, bicycles, and transit. Okay, so this is the way it is now, and this is what it looks like. 
okay? Like that, this is the hardware store. You come in, you turn, these are the steps going up. I'll have renderings later, they just haven't arrived yet. Let's show this in detail. You see they all end picturesquely. This is a whole series of things, this is the square. And then here's the new hardware store. Actually, this is, I'm sorry, I haven't moved the hardware store yet. But the hardware store would be here with tuck under parking and a masking building. These buildings would have, basically some of them would be reversed. This one has a nice facade, so we leave it with a square. This is the big brick one. These do not have a facade, so you put masking buildings. Both, it completes this square, this completes this square, and this one completes this square. But on the whole, you have a very picturesque and very long uh, main street back there that should really be excellent. You may choose to make it inexpensive buildings, just one story. You know, uh, the thing about Canton Street, it's very inexpensive buildings. One story. You don't have to build three-story condos for this to work. Although you may want to because the view is good in the back. In the front, I think I would stick to single-story buildings just to get them to happen uh, so that they're leasable. And this is, the, this is the, I just switched this. This is the supermarket with a green roof, of course. And here's its parking. Okay, so the deal would really be for that old decrepit store hardware store to move here. You don't want to lose it. No. You really don't. But you also might want to market. And this is in the very center of the, of the town. It's, it's, the only, it's the only place that a market would work. It's on mass transit. It's on mass transit. Right. So you get to buy groceries. Right? Which you wanted. Well, you can get, a, you can get on your bus stop and get a, and then get off in this no, bus stop. I can stop. walk. Yeah. It's one mile. No, you don't want to walk. I walk in the <laughs> No, because most of the, 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 the space in between is not very nice. Don't think we're fixing the whole of Atlanta oh. Street. <laughs> My dear. Okay, it's, it's hostile. It's no, don't worry about Well, nobody's that. as tough as you. Don't personalize it. No, no, no. I'm just saying, I can't walk. I walk there all the but time. But that's you. Well. Everybody else is weaker. Um, okay, so here, here's that. Okay, now the last one, the City Hall Square. Okay, so you have the City Hall no one can see. And then another thing that happened, everybody told me this. Oh, by the way, we're thinking of a library, but don't tell anybody. We're thinking of a courthouse, but don't tell anybody. And we're thinking of an arts building, but don't tell anybody. Okay, it's all secret. And I think probably is because um, you have basically a collection of, of disconnected civic buildings back there. They never add up. And one, of the, one of the things that set me off on this is somebody said, could you please teach us how to get from here to there? And I say, well, you know, I really can't. <laughs> because you can't see it, there's no reason to do it, etc. But basically, what else, what else set me off is that there was a call for having a gate here so that people would somehow cross. The notion was, this is just so bad I couldn't believe it, the existing plan means the pedestrian is going to come over here, go past an open parking lot, stand in front of the hideous mm -hmm. gas station, mm -hmm. wait for a light here. Why, why here? Because that's where the light is already. Mm -hmm. Cross over and then find a way mm -hmm. that enters somewhere here. And actually, we said, my first thought was, could we at least align that gate with the dome? And so I stood there and I said, but we can't even see the dome. We couldn't even align it. And then I said, why are you crossing here anyway? If you stand in Canton Street, which is where the people are, right? Remember, these are the citizens. This is the civic building. That's what you want to connect. If you stand here, this park is designed in such a way that it scoops you up. It just scoops you up. Right right there, you can see it. Stand in Canton and you'll see that that park was designed to take you like that. So the crossing really should be here. You see it? Like that. You know why it isn't there? Because the light is here. <laughs> so my next thought was, I'll just put a circle here because that avoids the light. Therefore, we can get a light there. But once you get a circle, which we drew, why not get a circle like this, which is called a square? You see, so that was act, I just want to show you the, the thought process. This didn't come out of nowhere. This is act, okay, the first act was this. This is what we first drew. We said, got it, okay? So we're gonna have a, see the path here? This is where you get scooped up. This is where the light is, because this no longer needs a light. You're going to have a light anyway. You might as well put it where the pedestrians are. And then you cross, and it's lined up on the dome. And then we said, well, now that you have something that looks a little more decent, that you've torn up all those signs and overhead wires and all the huge amount of 
collection of junk that you have here. By the way, next time you stand there, just look and tell me, by what miracle would anybody want to turn in here? It's because you have to know it's there. And then we say, why is there an open parking lot? Why not put a masking building on it? And then why not reverse the, there's also a problem with a gas station because the intersection is too close. So you reverse it, you do a backwards gas station, put the shop in front, which completes the second diagonal, you see, so that's a decent entrance, and then you leave the old dying stores where they are. You know. Then we got interested in the dying stores. To fix them. <laughs> but that was the move one, and this would have been and but then there's this. What if we did that? Okay, now this is complete traffic engineering. By the way, this is not a really great square because we have the big radii that allow the cars to come in and not have to slow up. If you really wanted it, you would get them to get down to 30 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, does not hold traffic up because 30 miles an hour is the maximum capacity, throughput. Maximum throughput is at 30 miles an hour because the cars are closer. So remember, you can even have three lanes, not just two lanes, but three lanes. And if you're really, really good for festivals, just for festivals, you would have actually head in parking that would be removed at all other times during commuting times and you have a perfectly good square that has the eight war memorials that the Rotarians want yes. you also capture the woodlands Do you realize the woodlands are still there those woodlands that for some reason you want even though you have you know forever of actually good trees but somehow you have these pine trees that you love fine you can keep most of them if you want but look at this you cross in the middle there would be a couple of lights and you could because it's easier to cross because it's one way traffic you could actually connect the courthouse excuse me the city hall with the future library that might actually activate the dead stores here with food or something you could have the art center here right which is floating around waiting to land perfect <laughs> by the way this is all public ownership all this land is public ownership all this you don't have to buy anything the art center could really anchor this street which by the way needs a little help up here but that art center and then over here could be the new courthouse which at least is supposed to be jail as opposed to whatever you were thinking about <laughs> and now what do you get here you get four civic buildings on a square which is an absolute home run you know because that's really that's really what it's about is trying to put the civic buildings in one place it's also crossable now remember one thing this is not first-rate walkable urbanism. You're going to be very proud of this, and it puts Roswell on the map and all those things. The first-rate walkable urbanism will continue to be, hopefully, an improved Canton Street, and then the new. Mm -hmm. The squares are not. The squares are something you have for festivals. So I think the crossing would be a relatively low. By the way, you still need very badly a frontage here, a masking building. You need very badly that reverse gas station, and you can leave this part, which actually isn't completely dead, if you want. You know, this part of the this this part is rather dead. And so that looks like this. Okay, that's the existing courthouse. These are the woods. Look at the incredible sort of traffic engineering mess that you have here. And of course, there are overhead wires and stuff, all that mess. Really third rate, dying retail everywhere. I mean, not even second rate, it's third. And then you have this, okay, which is, that's just the highway, that's just the traffic engineering, which really, really works. This is a, this is a traffic circle. And again, if you could talk them out of the high-speed curves, we didn't want to frighten them completely. But these should be, these should be lesser. And then, of course, you get the civic buildings, right? And this is a walk with the memorials. And you can still have your festivals in front. As I said, the walk, the walking works perfectly in both directions. So you would actually come off the street, go to the art center, and this is where the pedestrian system would be. And again, here's the masking building, very clear, in case it wasn't clear before, with a nice chamfer, and this is the gasoline station on the other side. So you'd be taking that parking lot. Would there be parking behind that building? Because we need the parking. Uh, you have parking behind the building, just like it is now. By the way, you don't need the parking. It's hopeless. The parking so, but there is a parking garage you should have built. It. See this hollow here uh -huh. that you kind of paved. It should really be a two, two or triple deck. Right. You need the parking, but you'll never have enough. 
What about underground parking? Uh, not nice. People don't like it. This isn't underground because the way the land drops, there's some parking underneath, some parking on the surface, and slightly mm -hmm. above. It's also just very slight ramps. I think this would be, if you were really, really good, you'd get DOT to pay for this too. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, this kind, of, this kind of thing, and here is the, uh, and here is the, uh, this beautiful map, really. See how, now, I think a modern traffic engineer would look at this diagram and think they went to heaven. This is exactly what it's supposed to look like. This is exactly what pedestrianism and bus stops look like. And it isn't just a bench. You know, this isn't just three benches. It's the whole, basically the whole show in Egypt. I think that's my last slide. And you have 15 minutes to go see, yeah, to go see the, the real thing, which is in City Hall. But if you have any questions, what, what would all this cost? Uh, okay, I think that would actually cost less than the existing plan. Because the purchases are negligible. There's almost no purchase. All, all this, most of this is private sector. Ownership. Virtually everything is private sector ownership here, except the city might buy one or two decrepit lots that you, you can actually see it. Not very valuable stuff. And then this, I think, can be negotiated with on, on private land. They say we're actually building, we're actually building a parking lot for you. So that would be the. Hey, Milton's, the downtown Milton treatment in that area. No, they have restaurants on either side. The little uh, condos in the back. Maybe that could be comparable. I don't know. No, there's a, isn't there a place called Five Points or something like that yeah. in Atlanta? There are a couple of places like that, right? Well, this is not, this is newer. It's really Yeah, I mean, yeah, Cabo. But it's, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's really a just looks world. kind of similar, and I didn't know if similar. Yeah. I don't know Atlanta well enough to, to know where to find. Maybe, may, oh, you know what? <clears throat> it's a newer development, it's about is, six uh, miles. I know, but there's, you know where there is? Um, Scott Ball from our office actually lives in a place that has at least three excellent streets of this kind. It's an old neighborhood. Inman Park. Yeah, Inman Park. Yeah. Um, we're going to have to go okay. to City Hall. Thank you. All right. Okay.